Are you currently suffering from shoulder pain that's exacerbated with movements such as raising your arm overhead or reaching behind your back? Hey everyone, this is Dr. Zach Root here at Performance Sport and Spine, and today's video will be discussing shoulder impingement. What does this condition feel like? Well, it typically presents as pain on the front of the shoulder or the outside aspect, and again, it's made worse with raising your arm overhead or with external rotation motions. And we greatly appreciate it. If you like our video, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to turn on notifications. What is causing your pain? Well, historically, we thought that shoulder impingement was just this mechanical wear and tear of your tendon between your bones. And as you raise your arm, you'd be kind of wearing out the tendon. Well, it turns out this theory is a little bit outdated and scientifically flawed. And from this, a more accurate term is probably rotator cuff-related shoulder pain that better recognizes the complexity of pain and the many factors that are involving but the big takeaway here is I think that tissues are getting irritated for a variety of reasons, not that raising your arm is mechanically wearing out your tendon. And then later in the video, I'll go over this in much greater detail and also show you how surgery is no better than exercise. We need to go over a couple of activity modifications. So raising your arm up over your head is not going to wear out your tendon, but it may further irritate the tendon. So just like if your finger was cut or sprained, you would maybe bend it a little less until it healed. You may want to reduce raising your arm for a few days or weeks until the tissues calm down. Another thing is with my arm to the side, the rotator cuff tendon is kind of in this orientation. If I bring my arm up like this, it's in this straight orientation. And what they found is that when it's this position, there's compression forces on the inside and tension forces on the outside. So if you do a lot of exercises like this, you're gonna further irritate the tendon. But if you put your arm in this position, there's much less chance to irritate it. So this is probably a better position to start the rehab in. This is also why sleeping on the affected side for long periods of time puts that tendon in that 90 degree angle and can also be irritable. So maybe it's best to sleep on your back or the other side for a few days or weeks. So now we're going over the exercise and rehabilitation portion of this video. See the external rotation with a dumbbell. So with a light dumbbell with your arm at 90 and you want to find a bench or a step that's about the same height as your shoulder so things are parallel for that rotator cuff tendon. And then we're going to use our shoulder, we're going to rotate up nice and controlled to about 90, and then return to the starting position. Again, you wanna make sure that your shoulder is doing it and not your elbow, and we recommend starting with a light weight and then increasing over time. And some people may find that in reducing the range of motion initially is helpful, and then increasing as tolerated. Another option is the same exercise with the resistance band. Again, keeping your arm at 90-90, rotate backwards using your shoulder, and then slow and controlled return to the starting position. So the table slides. So finding a bench or a table that's about the same height as our shoulder in a seated position, we're going to bend our elbow at 90 and then pressing down with our hand into the bench or table, we're going to slide our hand up overhead and then return to the starting position. And as you do this, you've got to remember to push tension down into the bench. And again, it may be best to reduce your range of motion, not go the full way initially, and then increase the range of motion or difficulty over time. If the resistance is too high, you can put a washcloth between this object and your hand, and again, repeat the same motion while pressing down, and then as you build up strength and the tendon calms down, you can remove the washcloth or object. The sideline arm raise. Laying on your side with your affected shoulder up, grab a light dumbbell. Press up perpendicular to the floor and hold for 10 seconds or tolerated. Progression two. Again, pressing up overhead, and then lower it down 30 degrees, and then raise it up 30 degrees. You may need to reduce the range of motion even more, but again, kind of adjust to your current symptom levels and strength levels. And then progression three would be the full range of motion. So all the way overhead, and then all the way down. And again, it's best to go slow and not increase the weight and the range of motion at the same time. Just change one variable. So in a seated position with a lightweight resistance band around your hands, you're going to bring your arms up to a 90-90, trying to keep your hands, elbows, and shoulders in alignment. And then you're going to press your hands out against the band of tolerance, and then return to the starting position. You feel dental gel tension over the back of your shoulder. We will link all the bands and objects in the contents of the video. The wall push-up. Again, making sure our elbows are parallel to our shoulders. We're going to press into the wall and then away. Recommend starting with an easy version. And then over time, you can either walk your feet away 
or start to do the push-ups on your knees, a bench, or on your toes. The anatomy that we we're talking about the shoulder, so there's the scapula or shoulder blade, the humerus or the upper bone of the arm with the ball, there's a clavicle or collarbone, and then the chromium. And there's a small space right here where the tendons run through that'll be relevant later in the video. We're now gonna talk about some myths of this issue and why shoulder impingement is not a great name for this condition. So myth number one, if we thought this acromium, this bone above the tendon, you can see in the image right here with the red circle, was wearing out your tendon, as you raised your arm up, the top side of the tendon would see the changes. Well, it turns out about 80% of the time, you see the changes on the bottom side. So this further disputes this impingement theory. So think of my finger as the tendon. If the top part was irritating the tendon, it would look like this. But again, most of the time the studies show the changes coming from the bottom part of the tendon. Number two, that a hook acromium, or the one circled in red, is more likely to irritate the tendon than the other two types of acromiums, one or two. So this fascinating study looked at 750 cadavers, 211 of which were under the age of 30. None of them had the hooked acromium. So more likely that this is not a bone that you were born with, but adaptation over time. So again, these changes are happening from movement, not causing damage. Myth number three, most people feel pain above 90 degrees of abduction in that painful arc thing. Well, this paper found that the smallest difference where that tendon travels between the two bones is actually between 30 and 60 degrees. So again, this further kind of dispels this impingement theory. Myth number four, this paper found that 50% of people that actually impinge on their tendon don't have pain. So if one in two people don't have pain, you can't really call it a problem or a condition. And since we're a biological entity, not a machine, it's important to look at life stressors. So before your pain, it's good to look about, have you had less sleep? Have you had more additional professional or personal stress? Have you reduced your physical activity? Have you uptaked or increased smoking or have poor nutrition? Again, other factors than just the shoulder can help exacerbate or sensitize the tissues. Now we're gonna look at if surgery is better than physical therapy or exercises. So this great paper in The Lancet, the Seesaw Trial, compared three different groups in a multi-center approach. So one group had true decompression surgery. Another group had arthroscopic surgery, but nothing was removed. The patient believed they had surgery, but no tissue was taken from their body. And then the last group was a control group. If you look at this graph here, the red line was an arthroscopic surgery, so no tissue was removed in these patients. The blue line was a true decompression surgery, so tissue was removed, and the green line was a control group. And the two big takeaways were that there was no difference at 12-year follow-ups for both pain and function between the surgery group that took tissue out and the people that had surgery that with no tissue was taken out. And the improvement was better than the control group, but it wasn't clinically significant. And you may be thinking, well, why is this all important? Well, trust me, when people think that something's wearing out their body and that until it's removed, no exercise or physical therapy is worth it, it's gonna be less motivated and they're gonna have worse outcomes. But I hope I've proven to you that it's way more complex than some bone wearing out your tendon. And often exercise and rehab is the best first line intervention and can be very helpful. Now, surgery is gonna be warranted for some cases, so critical thinking should always be applied, but it isn't something that you have to just get cut out of you. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you found it helpful, please like our video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos.